Hello info person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss an unusual discovery from just a few years ago that created a new problem for astrophysics and specifically for cosmology. A problem that the scientists now refer to as S8 tension. And so let's actually discuss what's going on here and what it all means and discuss this recent study that basically confirms this once again. But I guess to start, let's briefly discuss the universe and what we know about it. Today, when it comes to modern cosmology, the most successful theory that most physicists accept is referred to as Lambda CDM, the cosmological concept that proposes an expanding universe where the expansion seems to be caused by something we refer to as dark energy, but that also contains a component referred to as dark matter. And in this model, everything began approximately 13.8 billion years ago when the universe started with the Big Bang. And so here, letter Lambda, represents this cosmological constant that basically represents the accelerated expansion, whereas CDM stands for cold dark matter. And for the most part, this model pretty much explains the majority of the universe. But in the last decade or so, scientists started to discover a few things here and there, mostly based on actual observational evidence, where things didn't really add up. And when things don't really add up, cosmologists refer to this as tension. And the most famous such tension is the Hubble tension where the observations from the distant universe and the observations from the nearby universe seem to give us a slightly different value for the cosmological constant lambda. Now you can learn about this and the potential resolutions in some of the videos in the description, but today we're going to talk about this recently discovered tension referred to as S8, which basically represents a new tension where S8 is a mathematical number or mathematical parameter that represents the amplitude of matter fluctuation. Or in more layman terms, it represents the clumpiness of matter or how matter assembles into galaxies and into galactic clusters. And so if there wasn't enough tension before, we now get a new cosmological tension that has now been officially confirmed. But unlike Hubble tension that basically deals with dark energy, the S8 tension mostly deals with dark matter. The mysterious particle or I guess mysterious phenomenon that we know very little about. We actually have no idea what it even is, but we just know that it seems to exert huge gravitational influence on the entire universe and we observe its effects everywhere. The most obvious example is actually in various observations involving gravitational lensing. And it's really in these observations that the researchers can measure this S8 tension by basically comparing predictions of clumpiness of the universe with physical observations. And so basically by conducting a lot of different observations, focusing on various gravitational lensing surveys, in the last few years, cosmologists started to uncover discrepancies between the simulations, and here we're talking about simulations like the Illustrious project that show us how galaxies and galactic clusters assemble, and actual physical observations from various telescopes. But intriguingly, at first it wasn't clear if there was actually something going on here, because the actual difference is extremely small. And so some of the first research was basically trying to discover if there's really anything going on or if it's just some kind of an observational bias. And so exactly a year ago, in 2024, we discussed the first discoveries in a video in the description. This was one of the most comprehensive series of measurements that in five separate papers, with all of them in the links in the description below, definitively confirming this bizarre S8 or sigma 8 tension. Tension discovered by looking at datasets from the distant universe, so for example by looking at the cosmic microwave background, and then comparing the distribution of matter in this dataset with the distribution of matter much closer to us, visible in the gravitational lensing effects. And here this was based on a six-year-long survey known as HSC, the Hyper Supreme Cam instrument on the Subaru telescope in Hawaii that for six years was used to study weak gravitational lensing effects. Essentially extremely small lensing effects that very often affect single galaxies, which often produce these minute distortions because of a lot of matter, and mostly dark matter, that's usually around them or in front of them. And here this was done by looking at 25 million galaxies that allow the scientists to calculate the overall clumpiness. That's what the cosmologists refer to as S8. And the value for this clumpiness was discovered to be 0.763 to maybe 0.776. But here, a lot of things did not add up. Mostly because when calculating this by using CMB or the earliest light in the entire universe, the value is much, much higher, 0.83. Implying that the universe back then was basically clumpier. And that kind of doesn't actually make sense. 
because in the expanding universe, we kind of expect the opposite. As the universe became larger and larger, and as various galaxies came closer together, growing into larger and larger clusters, we basically expect the clumpiness to increase over time. Mostly because the matter starts out much smoother and eventually comes closer and closer, basically sticking together, kind of like clay or I guess oil, getting bigger and clumpier with time. Especially as all of these galaxies start to form the cosmic web, which basically makes everything inside this web much, much clumpier. And so here it was not entirely clear what's happening and why these observations had so much discrepancy. With one of the potential conclusions being, once again, maybe some kind of an error or some kind of a bias which meant that we need observations from something entirely different. And well now, exactly a year later, we get a new study by Shi Fan Chen and his team that does just that. It uses a different survey known as BOSS and reveals pretty much the same results. Here BOSS stands for Baryon Oscillation Spectroscopic Survey, which is also a huge galactic survey conducted over several years, although here using SDSS, Sloan Digital Sky Survey 2.5 meter telescope. And because here this survey focused on different galaxies and was even conducted using slightly different techniques, it presented a perfect opportunity to double check if this assay tension would still persist or if it would disappear completely. And while the reanalysis based on the BOSS data still seemed to suggest that the universe is a little bit less clumpy than expected. Here the value seems to be even smaller, approximately 0.7, and much, much smaller than what's observed when looking at the cosmic microwave background. And to see if this is just a problem with calculations or maybe with the modeling, researchers behind this paper even tried to recalculate this using slightly different dark energy models, yet the values didn't really change much. There was still a discrepancy between the observations from the cosmic microwave background and the observations from much closer galaxies. And so here there was no clear solution. Scientists here don't actually know what the answer is or why this is happening. They just know that there seems to be a 10% discrepancy between the distant universe and the nearby universe. And even though in every computer simulation we basically end up with much higher S8 or much higher clumpiness, the actual observations based on telescopes suggest an unusual 10% discrepancy. This was even compared to one of the most recent and most advanced simulations known as Flamingo that basically recreated a huge chunk of the universe extremely accurately. Yet the results were the same. Something in the universe, in the real universe, seems to suppress galactic growth or even cosmic growth, preventing galaxies and galactic structures from sticking together and from growing bigger. And because this idea and this clumpiness or even the clustering of galaxies and the formation of galactic clusters is usually used to understand the entire universe, this 10% discrepancy is technically a pretty big deal. It means that there's something we still really don't understand about the evolution of the universe, or maybe our theoretical models are incorrect after all and need to be fixed. Specifically models in regards to galactic growth and the formation of clusters. And though it's still possible that maybe there is some kind of an observational mistake or maybe even a calculation mistake, Right now, based on so many papers, the evidence for this tension seems to be pretty strong. Which means that the only way to answer all of this is, of course, more observations, more data, and more studies. And luckily for us, we're going to get more data from the Dark Energy Survey really, really soon, which might actually help us figure out what's happening here. Either way, though, right now, it just looks like we have two major problems. We have the problem with Dark Energy, that seems to be different from the early universe and the universe near us, and now we have a problem with dark matter or the stickiness, clumpiness of the universe. It also seems to be different between now and 13.8 billion years ago. Neither one of these problems right now has any resolution. And that means that we'll probably come back and talk more about this once there are some answers or someone comes up with something. Until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.